forecast first on Color 10 News, Ozarks First. Well, it feels like fall is here. Uh, certainly a much cooler pattern the last couple of days than we have seen. Here's a look outside right now. We don't have any wet weather to talk about, but certainly looked like it was going to rain throughout the day today. Did get a little bit of patchy drizzle from time to time. This is the clearing line that will gradually build on off towards the south and southwest. And as skies clear out, temperatures are going to be able to drop a little bit more. It's kind of cool right now in the low to mid 60s. By morning, looks like we'll dip into the upper 50s. And as kids are heading off to the bus stop, there's going to be some patchy fog out there. So drivers just be a bit more cautious tomorrow morning. 57 early on, we'll shake off the fog, and it looks like mostly sunny conditions with a high of 78 and a beautiful week ahead here locally. We'll talk about that and also Hurricane Florence coming up. Coach News at 9 starts now. From Ozarks First, you're watching Color 10 News at 9 on C. Thanks for joining us here at 9. I'm Brian Calfano. David has the night off. Our top story tonight people across the Ozarks continue to mourn the loss of a Greene County Sheriff's deputy. 35 year old Aaron Roberts was killed after his patrol car washed off the road during Friday's heavy rain. Color 10's Bria Douglas has been following the story today. And Bria, what have we learned? Brian, Springfield Mayor Ken McClure released a statement on Deputy Roberts' death. He says, quote, we are grateful for the deputy service, sacrifice, and deep commitment. We would also like to thank all of the first responders for their heroic actions and public service. And Deputy Roberts didn't just help people in the community, he helped animals. The organization Rescue One in Springfield posted this video to their Facebook page. It shows Deputy Roberts working with the group on a dog rescue last week. And the Greene County Sheriff's Office has dedicated a song and Deputy Roberts' memory. You can listen to that on a YouTube link from their Facebook page. And in case you missed our coverage of the original story, here's a recap of what happened on Friday night. 35 year old deputy and father Aaron Roberts died while doing his job on Friday. The accident happened on Cabin Creek Road off of Highway AA near Farm Road 221 and Farm Road 2. Deputy Roberts was responding to a 911 call someone made in the area, but hung up the phone. Afterwards, Roberts got in his patrol car and attempted to cross a bridge that had water over the top. He radioed in that uh, his car had uh, been washed off the roadway. A massive search effort was dispatched to find Deputy Roberts. A short time later, Deputy Roberts was located uh, at his patrol car and was deceased. The car was found a couple hundred feet off the roadway. The water was so deep. Um, that the car was underwater for a period of time. To give you a better understanding of the weather from that day, here's a look at the radar. Only when the water uh, began to um, slow down and, and uh, uh, that, that we're able to find the car. On Saturday, the community came together to show their respect to the fallen deputy. Well, they um, lay their life on the line to protect and serve the community. And um, I just feel the community should show them the same support. You never know how precious your days are, but this job in particular, you know, every day, it could be your last. In Springfield, Bria Douglas, Color 10 News, Ozarks First. Locals we talked to say the area is known to flood, and at nighttime it's easy to underestimate just how high the water level is. A GoFundMe account has been started to help raise money for Robert's family. Almost all of the $25,000 goal has been donated. However, Sheriff Jim Arnott says to be on the lookout for scammers who have fake fundraising events. You can also donate in person at any great southern bank in Missouri. Just let the tellers know your donation is for Deputy Roberts. And we're still waiting for Roberts' official funeral time and location. Once we know, we'll update you on OzarksFirst.com and our Color 10 smartphone app. Around the region, take a look at these pictures of an SUV that crashed through a high V gas station in Osage Beach yesterday. Police say the Yukon went across all lanes of traffic down a hill and crashed through the front door of the store. The driver had a medical issue before the accident and was slightly injured, but was not taken to the hospital. 
Another crash to tell you about. This happened this afternoon three miles west of Blue Eye, Missouri. The highway patrol says seven people were injured, including three very young children. This was a four vehicle crash, and everyone involved, though, had only minor injuries. They were taken to Cox Hospital in Branson as a precaution. Troopers say the vehicle missed a curve and struck three other cars. For names and ages of those injured, head to OzarksFirst.com. More local news tonight. We're only just beginning to head into autumn, but this weekend was the start of several fall festivals in the Ozarks. Color 10's Francis Lynn visited two today in Springfield. This weekend marked the kickoff for fall festivals around Springfield, and today there was a Japanese fall festival and a Greek festival. This is the 11th year of this three day long Greek festival. Father Andrew holds little talks in the, in the um, sanctuary there. And a lot of people are interested because some people have not heard of Orthodox or don't know what it is. Jeannie Duffy, a volunteer, says the festival is free. The event features dancing and bouncy castles for the kids, who told me they had a lot of fun today. I just uh, after church, we got to go to summer camp church, and then we got donuts. Well, the goal of the festival is to uh, expose people to the Orthodox church. It's also to uh, have uh, the community of Springfield and the surrounding areas. Volunteer David Duffy says the money from the food and merchandise sales goes right back into the church. And over at the Botanical Gardens, people celebrated the Japanese Fall Festival. Believe it or not, the weather has kept some folks away, but not everybody. We've been really, really busy the last couple of days, and today they're, they're just coming out like crazy. Cindy Job is the executive director of Springfield Sister Cities Association. This event is to celebrate our 32-year uh, relationship now with our sister city of Isasaki, Japan. And we're just trying to bring folks uh, some cultural opportunities here. They had performances, demonstrations, and hands on art projects. In Springfield, Francis Lynn, Ozarks First. New at 9 tonight, today was the last of three days for the home remodeling show happening at the Expo Center. But another popular event this weekend brought over 300 people to the Oasis Convention Center for a scrapbooking convention. A group called Scrapbook Generation hosted scrapbookers from 32 states and several countries to meet, share, and learn everything they know about sharing memories and pictures. Believe it or not, scrapbooking is so popular, this event sold out in 12 minutes last January. It's been six years since this group hosted something similar, and the owner says this year she decided to go big. We are all preserving our memories. We all may do it in different ways. We might do it through mini albums or scrapbook pages or um, just through sometimes travel journals or planners, but that's the main goal is preserving memories. The event even featured a nationally known scrapbook designer, Allison Davis, who is in something called the Creating Keepsakes Hall of Fame. Now, if you missed out on any of the fun today, another scrapbooking event has already been planned for next year. Around the Ozarks tonight, if you live west of Springfield and don't like to drive all the way into town to worship at James River Church, you have a new campus option that just opened up. James River hosted a grand opening of its new services at the Victory Ministry and Sports Complex in Joplin, located just off of Rage Line Road. It's the church's fourth location and the first campus outside of Springfield. Services are at 9 and 1045 in the morning with all the same types of programs the Springfield Church has. Coming up next in our weather coverage. We are preparing uh, for the worst and of course hoping for the best. A state of emergency declared in South Carolina as the East Coast braces for Hurricane Florence. Jamie has details on when the storm will make landfall and the fall-like temps for next week back here at home. You're watching Color 10 News at 9.
Missouri family says they're lucky to be alive after an extremely close call with lightning. Scott Darden says he was sleeping in his Afton home near St. Louis when thunder shook his entire house. When he came outside, he discovered it was a <coughs> lightning bolt that hit a huge tree in his front yard and came within inches of his living room. Well, we were all inside, but on the opposite end of the house, you know. But if it had landed in the middle, you know, it had destroyed the living room, dining room, kitchen, who knows. The tree crashed into Scott's garage, leaving a big hole, damaging two of his cars and blowing out the glass of his daughter's vehicle. But tonight's most pressing weather story, Hurricane Florence in the Atlantic Ocean, is on its way to the East Coast. The National Hurricane Center upgraded Florence this morning. The storm is tracking to make landfall this Thursday or Friday and is expected to be a dangerous hurricane. Preparations have already begun in South Carolina with 800 National Guard soldiers being pre-positioned. And Jamie, back here at home, can we expect any rain like we got with Gordon? Well, it looks like with, uh, with Florence, uh, we're not going to have to deal with any side effects or direct impacts here locally in the Ozarks. But it does look like this could be a pretty devastating hurricane for parts of the Carolinas, the way things are looking right now. Locally, uh, we're on the backside of the remnants of Gordon that kind of hooked up with that front back on Friday, generated the heavy rain, and then exited off to the east. And in its wake, it has left a very fall like pattern across the region. Outside right now, 63 degrees. It did peak outside about 10 minutes or so ago. It looks like we're starting to see a few stars through the clouds. The sky is becoming partly cloudy locally. Headlines today are the temperatures, how cool it was, 66 degrees. That's the coolest high since April the 26th. And not too far off the record lowest high temperature for today's date, which goes back to 1967. It was 62 degrees. Uh, average highs this time of the year are still in the low 80s. And just a week ago, Labor Day weekend, uh, we were looking at highs in the upper 80s. So, uh, you know, what a change over the last week and a sign that, yes, fall is gradually building into the Ozarks. Uh, temperatures, you can see, generally in the 60s across southern Missouri and in northwest Arkansas throughout the day today. And it wasn't just an afternoon thing. These temperatures just were locked in the low to mid 60s throughout the day. The coolest reading on the map, Branson at 64 for high this afternoon. Temperatures outside right now still generally in the low to mid 60s. 60s and, and then cloud cover across much of the area, keeping those temperatures very steady. But as the clouds clear out, and that's beginning to happen here to closer to central Missouri. We're also getting breaks in the clouds now into south central Missouri, including here in the Springfield area. As skies clear out, that will allow temperatures to drop a little bit more into the 50s. In fact, it looks like most of the area looking at morning lows in the 50s on Monday. Here's our storm. Uh, you can see still generating heavy rainfall across parts of uh, western Pennsylvania and Ohio, south down through Kentucky and Tennessee. And, and there was a stripe of very heavy rain over the last 48 hours. Remember, it really got going on Friday here locally. And then after that, it tracked across the St. Louis area, southern Illinois, southern Indiana, parts of Ohio and northern Kentucky. And, and many locations within the stretch picking up six inches plus in terms of rainfall. Locally for us, again, we're on the back side of that storm. Clearing skies tonight, watching for some patchy fog by morning. It could be locally dense. And then tomorrow, beautiful day. As we mix out that moisture, we should find mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies and mild and dry conditions across the area. So overnight tonight, look for the clouds to thin out. Patchy fog develops. Tomorrow morning, we'll find, again, a little bit of fog giving way to mostly sunny to partly cloudy conditions across all of the area. Temperatures are going to be near ideal for this time of the year. Dropping into the 50s tonight. So, comfy, cool out there to start off our Monday with afternoon highs that'll be very comfortable as well. This is open window kind of weather throughout the day. So, a nine on our colorator. Now, let's talk tropics. This is what Hurricane Florence looks like right now 85 mile per hour winds. The track will be off to the west with a curve more toward the northwest by uh, Wednesday to Thursday. And that will bring the storm by early afternoon on Thursday close to the Wilmington area, expected to be a major hurricane. The reason for this track is a blocking high 
that will prevent Florence from moving north. And uh, that's why it looks like we could be dealing with a major hurricane in the Carolinas later this week. For us locally, though, the weather will remain quiet. Conditions will remain mild, but warming up by the end of the week. No real shot at any rain until maybe Thursday to Friday. And that's just an isolated afternoon shower chance. Love those 50s, Jamie. Now, coming up next, we'll talk to a political expert about the future of Supreme Court nominee Judge Brett Kavanaugh and his nomination hearings. Stay with us. Think about that some more, Senator. Could you get back to me on that? Down to you. Segment of Ozarks tonight. Color 10's Jennifer Abreu is looking into the nomination of Judge Brett Kavanaugh for the Supreme Court, his hearing from last week, and what it means ahead of the confirmation vote coming up on September 20th. Tonight, we are talking to Paul Collins Jr. He is a professor and director of legal studies at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Paul, thanks for being with us for Ozarks tonight. The first question I have is we know that the Constitution says the Senate must give its advice and consent to the president's traditional nominees. But how much of what we have seen this past week has been more of grandstanding as opposed to truth finding? What do you think? That's a great question. Uh, first of all, anytime you put a United States senator in in front of a camera, there's going to be some grandstanding. But historically, senators have been able to extract substantive answers out of nominees. This hearing was a little bit different. It was more no, more like the hearing of Neil Gorsuch, and that Judge Kavanaugh was very, very reluctant to give answers to even some of the most basic uh, substantive questions. And when we're talking about Roe versus Wade, Judge Kavanaugh has called it settled law this week. Should abortion rights advocates be skeptical at this point? I think they should be. Uh, calling a case settled law is basically saying that the Supreme Court has decided the issue. So I think pro choice activists have a lot to be worried about with respect to Judge Kavanaugh becoming Justice Kavanaugh. Now, Republicans have said the way Democrats on the Senate committee have treated Kavanaugh during the, this hearing has been unfair. Why and why do, what do they mean by that? It was very clear from the beginning that the Democrats were going to take the gloves off and this was going to be a bare knuckle, bare knuckle fight. I think the Democrats were also frustrated by the lack of document production on behalf of Judge Kavanaugh and by the fact that he, he wasn't giving them substantive answers in the same way that previous nominees had. 
As Judge Kavanaugh avoided answering some of those questions and being specific in fear of possibly jeopardizing his confirmation. And one of the big issues that was left open in last week's hearing was whether or not Judge Kavanaugh lied or misled the committee during a court of appeals hearing back in 2006. And that's something Colin says we should keep an eye on this upcoming week. Now, Jen, the confirmation vote is set for September 20th. Yes, it is. And that is the last big item that Republicans want to get accomplished. Before before the fall recess so they can focus on campaigning for the November midterms. Thanks, Jen. Happy to have right. you on the political coverage tonight. All right, thanks. Great, great job, great job. Still ahead at 9, College of the Ozarks debuts new uniforms after dropping Nike as a sponsor. Details are coming up after the break. News for you this evening. We're getting a first look at new uniforms for College of the Ozarks. The news leader reporting tonight the school's volleyball team debuted these mostly plain gray shirts with the numbers and words Ozarks on the back. The old uniforms look like this and featured a Nike swoosh. And this comes after the school dropped Nike as a sponsor due to an ad featuring Colin Kaepernick. The College of the Ozarks president said that the ad was disrespectful to the country. Now, head coach Stacey Muckenthaler says her players, quote, don't care what t shirt they're wearing, they just want to play volleyball. The program will switch to Adidas uniforms in the future. Around the region, 75 years after their first game, there's still no crying in baseball. The women who inspired the movie A League of Their Own brought their story to baseball fans in Kansas City this weekend. Two dozen women who played for the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League greeted fans and signed autographs. These women were some of the 600-plus who filled the national pastime gap when men in the major leagues went to war. We played 115 games a season and we played every day with doubleheaders on Sundays and holidays. No days home. A league of their own brought the league's history to the big screen back in 1992. It seems like it's just yesterday. Coming up, a recap of your seven day forecast. We'll be right back. Um, just talk about the cooler weather, I guess. Oh, yeah. Yeah, shut up, Brian. Yeah. Nobody asked you anyway. Uh, Jamie, are you wanting to leave with traffic? Yeah, we'll just, yeah, just stop. Seven day.
And Jamie's here with the final check of your forecast. Yeah, after a cool and cloudy weekend, it looks like sun returns tomorrow with some beautiful conditions for the afternoon with a high of 78. Thanks for making Color 10 your home for news and weather. See you at 10.